It's true. I've been keeping a secret about the captain's quarters. There have been a few hints along the way, but this is something I have planned since the very beginning of this project. I'm not going to draw it out, I'll go ahead and tell you the secret. This space is not meant to be within a 17th century sea ship. It's still a captain's quarters, but it is a captain's quarters built within a spaceship. If you're not a fan of sci-fi, I hope you will still enjoy this project. Uh, as I said, there's been several hints. First, the captain is a time traveler, which is not typical to normal 17th century ships. A lot of people thought the constellation in the stained glass windows were a hint towards something more spaceship-like. And also the toilet that goes nowhere, which was halfway poor planning on my part, but also because it's kind of a replica. Also, many people asked why I hadn't finished off the top of this with like a ship deck. And that's because this entire setting is going to go into a spaceship cargo hold. So basically this space captain was so obsessed with 17th century ships that this was built as a replica inside of the spaceship that the captain is a captain of. So here's why I think this is going to be an interesting project whether you're a fan of sci-fi or not. What I'm going to have to do is meld this very antique looking interior with a more futuristic looking interior and make it look like they are part of the same universe. I do think it would be really fun to make it more of a retro space interior. You know, kind of the early 1980s TV show space interiors. I think those colors will really blend well with the scheme I already have going inside of the original Captain's Quarters. So whether you're excited about this surprise or not, I hope you'll continue to follow along as I work out this problem and also how to get this awkward shape inside of another awkward shape. So all this means that I need to do a little bit of designing today because I need to design the spaceship that's going to engulf the captain's quarters. So let's get started. To start creating this new layout, I'm just going to be using a plain piece of paper, not gridded paper or anything like that because I want to get my ideas out and not worry about scale just yet. I'm sketching out a front elevation that shows the opening of the rooms I've already created. I want this to kind of look like it's floating in the cargo space. It will be held in place by pistons, but I want it to look a little bit more like it's floating. I started writing false hidden support and then realized this is going to be the true support for the entire piece. And the pistons that I'm going to draw in a second are actually going to be the false support. I also want to make sure I add in some lighting. This is going to maybe look like studio lights, something you would see in a theater that would create some fake light outside of the fake captain's quarters. The pistons are going to go from the spaceship walls to the captain's quarters walls, hopefully to give some kind of appearance like the room could move or the room could rock back and forth to give a more realistic feel when you're inside of the room that you're actually on a ship. I'm creating a room in the lower left corner that coordinates with the existing door. It's going to have an accordion wall that connects with the side of the spaceship and then up at the top of the left corner, there's going to be a hallway that looks like it's leading into the spaceship area. This is also going to have an accordion hallway that leads to the door on the upper floor of the captain's quarters. And because of course no spaceship that you can see has uh, a rectangle hallway or a rectangle door, they all have to be some kind of weird shape, I started adding in angles here and there to make it look a little bit different. In the lower left hand room, I want to make it a transition room where the captain can have two jackets. One jacket that is going to be a 17th century captain's jacket and the other jacket is going to be a spaceship issued or space fleet whatever <laughs> issued jacket. This will be an area where the captain can change to make an entrance so that it's just a little bit more immersive. In the background, of course, I'm going to need some space panels because this is the cargo area where the captain's quarters is built inside the spaceship. So I'm going to need some kind of panels or lights 
or light up panels, <laughs> something along those lines. And there's going to be a lot of research that goes into this so that I can get something that immediately when you look at it, you know that this is a futuristic spaceship and not the inside of a sea ship. After getting all my initial designs down on paper, I'm going to go back and kind of shape the outer shell of this cargo space. Obviously, it's not going to be the entire spaceship. It's just one section of the spaceship that I'm going to be building, but I do want to give it as much chance as I can for someone to walk up and think, wow, that's a spaceship that has a part of a nautical ship inside of it. And it's going to be that challenge to try and really make it convincing. I added a few more beams here and there, a few more pistons. And I know the center area that I marked out is looking really plain, but of course that's where the captain's quarters is going. And so it will really quickly fill up and be a busy area. So now that I have the redesign done, I'm going to be super honest. I guess I'm just burying all my secrets today. I have been seriously lacking motivation on continuing the build on this project, specifically making the ceiling for the top part of the captain's quarters. That was my original plan for this week. I was supposed to be creating the ceiling and I literally just stood there with my arms and my arms would not move. Have you ever felt that way where you're like, I know I need to do this, but I can't, like I can't physically get the motivation and you just end up sitting there? It ended up being Tuesday night and I realized I have not filmed one thing for my video this week. How am I going to get over this building block, this creative block that I'm having with this project? Also, I know how many times are y'all gonna wanna watch me glue paper to something to make it look like wood texture to glue it onto something else. You know, there's only so many times that that's going to be interesting. So I started talking to myself and thinking, yes, literally talking to myself, and wondering what part of this project am I excited about? What part of this project can I get excited about? It's usually around the 50% to 75% mark in a project that I just get a little bit burnt out. The reason for that is all of the interesting parts of the project are usually built by then, or at least the parts that I'm really excited about. And it's finishing up the details and the finishes and the things that are going to take time that's left. And it's hard for me to get motivation to do those things. So in this conversation with myself, I realized I was really excited about creating some spaceship textures. I cannot continue on to the spaceship part of this project until I get the ceiling onto this piece and I, I don't want to continue on to that part of the project until I finish up several things here, which is the ceiling and the doors and I need to insert the safe. And so there's lots of things I need to do, which I'm just not motivated at this moment to do. So here's my plan. Hear me out. So have you ever been walking in an antique store or maybe at someone's house and you've seen these beautiful cross stitch samplers hanging on the wall? They look something like this. What they are is a sampling of the cross stitch artist's abilities or trying out different techniques. And it's just, I mean, they turn out beautiful and now they're worth hundreds of dollars if you see them in the antique store. So I was thinking, since I can't work on the spaceship walls, what if I could make a space wall sampler? This would be something that's not going to be permanently in my project, but it's giving me a chance to indulge in something I'm excited about and possibly give me ideas down the road. So I'm going to be doing this on just a flat piece of chipboard. This is cereal box material. You can also just get a cereal box and cut the side off and just start playing around with materials and textures and see what you can come up with for parts of the project that you're actually wanting to get to. So let's try it out. I started by grabbing all of my punches that were just generic shapes. I grabbed my paper cutter and the chipboard that I was going to work on top of, and also some cardstock. I also pulled up some samples of different spaceship interiors. I looked at some Star Wars, I looked at some Star Trek, I looked at the Serenity from Firefly, uh, Doctor Who. If you have any other suggestions for spaceship interiors you think I should look at or get really inspired by, let me know down in the comments. 
Right now I'm just starting to play with some of the shapes that I'm cutting with the punches and with my straight cutter. There's not really any rhyme or reason. I'm trying to match the feel and the vibe of some of my references. This one I'm creating now would be more of like a med bay area and probably more of like a 1980s type retro feel like I was saying before. I'm just gluing the cardstock straight onto the chipboard. And really this was super freeing because I know this is not going into a project. This is just playing around, trying out different techniques. There's really no way to get this wrong. And while I was creating this, I didn't even know if this would be a wall panel or a door. So I didn't even try to finish it. I just made a pattern that I knew I could turn into a technique or some kind of texture and just kept going with it. I decided to add some little buttons. These are the tiny circle punches glued on top of cardstock. Once it's glued down, I'm just going to let it dry and move on to another idea. In my references, I saw a lot of circles or rounded shapes. That tends to be a very spaceship type thing. And I had this huge circle punch that I really wanted to use by making some circle voids. I crossed out a grid on this paper so I knew I got them somewhat lined up and then used the circle punch to cut out the interior circles. As you can see, my cardstock isn't even perfect. There's a chunk taken out of one corner, but that's okay. I'm just playing around with it so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm taking those larger circles and then cutting a smaller circle out of it and then gluing that in the center. And at the moment, I'm like, oh darn, I made a traffic light. <laughs> But, you know, this is part of the process of discovery, trying to figure out what will look good and what someone might walk up and say, wow, it's a traffic light. I tried this little grid and to see if I could make like a grid going across the interior circles. I ended up not liking that very much, so I moved on to something else. I had this snowflake punch and I didn't want to use the snowflake part, but I wanted to use the edges. So I'm just going to cut those off and they're going to become these like claw like things that are holding the center circles in place. That's one of the really fun things about futuristic design is you can really just kind of make it up because it hasn't happened yet in a lot of cases. I did this for each one of the circles and I think it took a little bit of the traffic light out of this wall. I also added a couple circles in the center in between the larger circles and two bands on either side to make it look more like a wall panel. Next up, I wanted to do something with a little bit more of a 3D effect. So I grabbed some coffee straws and some leftover cardstock and I'm going to be making it look hopefully like some pipes or some wire coverings that are going along the spaceship wall. I glued these down with tacky glue at first, but uh, tacky glue and coffee straws don't get along in case you're following this tutorial. Uh, I would definitely use hot glue in the first place. I let them dry completely and then I added a few more strips of cardstock. As you can see that one came off so I went back with some hot glue to glue it back down and then I decided to wrap the cardstock around the straws so that they were completely enclosed. This is also going to help ensure that the straws don't fall out later on down the road. This is a good example of how testing some of these techniques ahead of time are good and beneficial because I now know not to worry about tacky glue. If I use these coffee straws in the future, I can go straight to hot glue and it looks okay. I'm adding a piece of paper to the very bottom of the thicker band of cardstock and then cutting away the excess. These are going to make it look like the pipes or the wire coverings are kind of ending in this area and hopefully going back into the wall. It's not easy to curve coffee straws so I kind of have to hide where they might curve into the wall. I'm making a fake ceiling with this block of wood because I do think it would be interesting to have the pipes going up into the ceiling. I'm adding some hot glue at the very top of the straws and on the back of the cardstock and then gluing them in place trying to make sure that it's as straight as possible. I think this was one of my favorite techniques and looks that I came up with so I know in the future I'm definitely going to have some of these pipes running through the spaceship. 
I decided to add a few more thinner strips of cardstock to make it look like metal straps that are holding these pieces to the wall. And they will look more like metal once I add the paint. I added a few other scraps I found to look like some random panels and just glued those down. I decided to try and use some fabric paint. It kind of holds its shape a little bit better. And I'm also using a dotting tool to apply it. I'm hoping this could be an easy way to put rivets onto all of these pieces. Rivets can give a more of a metal look, especially when you're working with paper, and these will be a lot easier and faster to do than making the rivets one circle at a time. So it'll really show up in the painting whether that worked or not. I think I could have done an entirely other panel with just 3D ideas, and that would have been really fun using larger straws or other materials I found around the studio, but unfortunately this week I just had time for one sheet. I'm using a thicker material here. This is more chipboard. I'm cutting it into one inch by two inch panels, and I'm going to try and create a pattern. I found on the back wall of the Serenity ship from the show Firefly that there was this kind of interesting pattern made from, I think it's metal panels. I'll have to look a little bit closer, but I wanted to try and recreate that. So I glued down these pieces in somewhat of a pattern, and then anywhere it overlapped my sample piece, I cut off the excess. I also wanted to create some something that looked like welds because a lot of times in spaceships space shows they're trying to take care of the ship and that comes into a lot of welding because these ships are oftentimes made of metal i put the fabric paint a couple of places to create the welds one of them is on top of the panel one of them is to the side this will help me decide down the line which one is better I also tried to make some more rivets with them, and then I decided to compare it with making actual punched circle rivets, which this is the punch I think that has the smallest circles in it. So I'm going to carefully, one at a time, apply those to a panel, and then I can kind of compare once I paint it whether it is worth doing each individual rivet by hand using a small circle of paper, or if it's okay to just kind of dot the paint and be a little bit cleaner about it than I was in this sample. If you're trying out this process and you're not making a video like I am, I suggest you write down what you're doing along the way so you can go back and remember the processes, the materials, the techniques you use to get those results. I'm glad I have a video so I can go back and remember which parts I did what way so I can pick out what I liked and reproduce it. So these are the textures I have so far. It is now time to go ahead and coat it with a layer of Mod Podge. I'm using the Black Mod Podge mixture by Black Magic Craft, where you just put black acrylic paint, mix it with Mod Podge. And I wanted to show you this handy dandy jar opener. Uh, we got one for the kitchen and it has oftentimes migrated to my craft room. And so now we have two so that we have one for food and one for crafts. Uh, my hand hurts whenever I try to open jars and this one will kind of mess up your jar lid So be careful if you try it, but it opens jars so well So if you have hand pain, I'll leave a link to one of these below. I love it helps me with my Mod Podge jars every time I'm going to coat everything with the Mod Podge mixture This is going to give me a nice dark base coat and it's going to seal everything. It's going to seal the paper and the chipboard. So when I start using some watery substances on top of it, I don't have any of that paper pulling up or wrinkling. This is how it looks once it's dried. And already I am loving those pipes. I think they're, I personally think they're looking pretty realistic. I'm also able to tell at this point what textures I don't like. The chipboard is very, chipboardy <laughs> and I can see the texture really well through the Mod Podge and it's not going to make a very good metal texture I don't think so and so the cardstock on top of it worked a little bit better so this is another reason that doing a sampler might be helpful is you can really start pulling out the textures you like and don't like and yes the circle paper rivets turned out way better <laughs> so that'll be a pain but hopefully it'll be worth it 
I'm using some metallic paints and some matte paints to start and build up some color on this wall. Metallic paints tend to be a little bit translucent. So what you can do is you can take different colors as your base coat for a metallic paint and it will slightly change those colors when you put the same metallic paint on top of it. So I'm using some different colored base coats to go on the panels. So when I put a silver metallic paint over all of them, they do look slightly different in the end. So they could represent different types of metal. And at this point, I'm kind of pointing out my welds and the one on the side made my paint look a little bit messy, but hopefully the silver will kind of make it look a little bit more cohesive. I ended up applying two coats of this silver metallic paint. I'm trying to keep it as even as possible and get in all the grooves between the panels. And in the end, this is what it looks like. Sometimes on camera you can tell that they're different colors. It's a little bit more impactful in person than it is on camera. I also decided to continue the silver behind the pipes. And to make sure that the pipes stood out, I'm using a copper for the metal that's holding the pipes in place. I'm going to leave the pipes a black because I think that's I think it looks good. <laughs> and then I also painted those little panels. I painted a base coat of brown before I put the copper, I think it's antique copper, is the color I used on top of it. And now for the fun part, I'm going to distress the entire thing. I'm gonna age it, which you know is my favorite part. I'm using a watered down mixture of just acrylic paint and water and I'm going over everything. This is where having the coat of Mod Podge underneath all this paint is really going to help. Everything stayed in place and I didn't have any problems with wrinkles. I'm still using my one, two, three blocks to hold down the edges and that's really helpful because it will tend to want to warp, but overall it worked really, really well. And it might look kind of like a mess now, but it does dry better than how it looks when it's wet, as you can see now. It dried really well. It looks like a dirty cargo bay that nobody's wiped down the walls in a while. I'm now using some matte gray to brush the tops of the pipes, and this is gonna help the pipes stand out. Around this time, I ended up calling my dad. He knows a lot about welding and welds, and we had a little conversation about how I could make the welds more realistic. I end up not doing it in this video, but I have those ideas for the future. Uh, but just as a spaceship wall? Yeah. You would want that to be a highly qualified welder to do that. Right. Highly skilled. So is your welder a skilled welder or just somebody that's trying to get the job done? Moving on to the traffic light, I wanted to start to add a little bit more color. I'm going to use these two green paints to fill in the circle areas, hopefully to give the appearance that they're glowing. Once I start building the actual spaceship interior, I might be able to add some LEDs, but just in case that's a little bit difficult, these paints are, well, this one is color shift and the other one's a little bit neon, like you can't even really read the label because it's so bright, but I think it could possibly give a glowing effect if I can't get lights in there. So that was really fun to paint and time consuming because it was very detailed. But to contrast that, I decided to do a matte gray paint for the panel that goes around it. I think the matte paint gives it more of a plastic panel or a fiberglass panel feel, and it's a nice contrast to the metal, which is right next to it. And it also contrasts really well with the iridescent or color shifting paint. Of course, I have to age it. And again, it's gonna look like I'm just ruining everything, but I promise, well, you may not think so, but I promise it does add to it. All that little watered down, this is watered down brown paint, gets into all those little crevices and really starts to bring out the details. And once it dries, it really does look like an aged panel off of a ship. And if I wanted to, I could definitely go back and brighten up those circles, but honestly, I don't think the brown paint did that much to dull them. Now we have one section left and I wanna do this kind of along that med bay idea again, very tan or light colors. And so I'm painting the entire panel first with a matte tan acrylic paint. Then I'm going, and I'm just gonna kind of 
clean up the edges just a little bit, not too much. I'm not fussing with it a lot because again, this is a sample page, but I'm going to surround it with my one, two, three blocks and add again, some more aging. This is the same watered down brown paint I used on the previous panel. This is going to get into all those crevices and it's going to make these panels really stand out. If you haven't worked a lot with watercolor, you may not realize that a dry paintbrush is designed to pick up water. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all of the water out of my brush and start picking up these areas where there's leftover watered down brown paint. And this is because I have a dry brush and it's just going to attract all that water. It's going to leave the watered down brown paint in the cracks and I can just pick up what I don't want. Now I have to do this quickly or else it'll start to dry and there'll be smudges on the panels. I couldn't move fast enough here to get all of the paint, so I decided to go back with the tan color I used previously and just kind of brighten up the center of each one of those squares. It took some time, but I really think it helped the panel brighten back up just a little bit. At this point, I realized that it, I wanted this to be a little bit more shiny, so it did have that plastic look to it. And so I decided to grab my gloss Mod Podge, and this is going to go over the top of it. Now, the one thing I don't like about the gloss Mod Podge is that it leaves a lot of brush strokes, and because it's gloss, you can really see the brush strokes really well. So I'm gonna have to come up with another way to do that but I recently got this. Yay, it's an airbrush! And I think it's gonna be so helpful on this project because airbrushes are really good at getting flat surfaces, not having brush marks, which is not something that you're going to see on a spaceship wall. So hopefully I can get that out and start figuring it out soon. I added two bright acrylic colors, one on each of the buttons to help them stand out a little bit. And I think this is looking very vintagey, dirty, cargo, spaceship-ish, and I'm super happy with it. If you have other tips or tricks or techniques or materials that you think will really, really help me in this, I'm more than willing to try them out to keep on learning. And I really want to kind of update my welds. And so I think that'll be really fun to figure out. And maybe I can also test out some lighting effects, maybe with some clear materials. There's so many possibilities. So I may be making a few more of these. <laughs> I've officially finished my project sampler. I had so much fun doing this, so much fun. I can't even describe, I just, I enjoyed sitting there pulling out a bunch of paints and a bunch of materials and just literally playing around, trying to see what I could create. There wasn't any pressure because this wasn't actually going into my project, but I learned a lot of things along the way that may make my future building process a little bit easier. And especially because I'm going to have to be melding together the captain's quarters with a futuristic type space, this is a good way for me to put what I've experimented with next to the original so I can see if I think these textures will work. If it hadn't taken me so long to figure out what I wanted to do this week, I probably would have done three more panels like this because I was just having so much fun. And space walls can be so many different things that you can just really experiment with shapes and colors and just see what you can come up with. And I was also thinking maybe this could be framed, right? So they frame cross stitch samplers. Why can't I frame my spaceship wall sampler? I think I'm gonna do that. that turned out pretty well. So the result of this is I'm feeling much more motivated now to do the things that I didn't want to do previously, simply because I'm excited to get to this part of the project. So my motivation has changed from I just have to get through it to get it done to I just need to get through it so I can get to this part that I'm really excited about. I think it'll be really fun to hang this on my wall and let this be my inspiration or my reminder of what I'm really excited to create next. 
have two things to share with you before I end this video. The first one is you may have noticed a very new intro to this video. I had a subscriber named Brad reach out and offer his 3D services to create a new intro for the channel. Thank you so much, Brad. I love it. I am so excited to continue using it in the videos. If you're interested in hiring someone for your own 3D work, I will leave some information so you can get in touch with Brad in the description box below. And lastly, I want to remind you that next week is my final week off for the summer, and when I come back, it will be Beetle Gust. So I'm really going to rest up this next week so we can have an exciting August filled with all sorts of beetle juicy type content. That sounded weird. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you do end up making some sort of space wall or some kind of miniature sampler for your own project, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I would love to see what you're creating. Also make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos. I really do appreciate that. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Ugh. I don't like glass noises. You can do it. Woo.